Hi everyone, this is a collaboration between Miju and Hadassah Global. We are coming together with the common cause of looking at the epidemic of drugs and our youth in Zambia. We are looking at the causes, the root causes behind it. Is it a social issue? Is it an economical issue? Is it a, a, a governmental issue? And we're going to be talking about different ways in which the youth particularly are being affected. So our focus in this particular program is to speak to the youth themselves let's go on the ground let's speak to them let's hear what they have to say isn't that right Tim absolutely true mm -hmm. um, yeah so we'll be looking at a number of stakeholders each giving us a perspective on what they feel the issue is really rooted in join us on this particular episode as we interact with the stakeholders so we continue to interact with various stakeholders on the issue of drug addiction drug abuse and stigma. Uh, on my far left we have an environment educator and youth, Owen Kagele, and right in the middle we have James Kamwen. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll start with you Owen. Um, as an environment educator, do you think the problem of drug abuse and addiction is an environmental problem? Well, yeah. Um, in, the first, in the first place, I'm, I'm going to, to talk about the perception people have when we talk about environment. As environmentalists, um, people most, most of the times when they hear environmentalists, they, they think of, we are, we are, we are colored green because the environmental is so it, environmental education is a cross-cutting issue it's a cross-cutting program it looks at different dimensions we are talking about the four dimensions the four main dimensions of it we are talking about the political aspect of it we are talking about the economic aspect of it the natural aspect of it and the social aspect of it so now Mm, when you talk about drug abuse being an environmental problem, it is an environmental problem in that it, it's a social problem. So how is it a social problem? Because it causes these issues such as, um, let's talk about child labor. It is also induced by, it is also caused by, by drug abuse. We are talking about illiteracy amongst the youth. We are talking about mm, poverty around, it is, it is an environmental problem, yes. So let's talk about how, how drug abuse causes about poverty. People will become less productive when they, when they abuse drugs. Mm, by, by abusing, we are, we are talking about drug consumption, but drug abuse is using, cons consuming drugs beyond what is required. Yes, because we, we are talking about these, these issues like the medicinal drugs, but some people choose to abuse these drugs. Let's talk about um, benilin. People tend to use benilin to, to, for, for, for their, for how can I put it? Mm, yeah, just just to to fit into society, I can say they're trying to fit into society because their friends are, are doing these drugs. They also want to to explore. I can say, yeah. So it, uh, due to that, they become less productive. What do they do after consuming those drugs, abusing them? They the only thing they will think of is. Where am I going to find the, some more drugs to, to consume? So it, it becomes a, a, a problem. So we talk about how it's causing illiteracy. People no longer pay attention to, 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 to research and, and, and doing academic exercises or anything. They will, they will just concentrate on doing drugs. So instead of them channeling their time and, and energy into academics, they'll, they'll channel their energies to drugs for comfort and other adventures, I can say. 
Okay, yes. Okay, no, thank you for, for that explanation. Uh, James, you, you've just graduated from the University of Zambia. Yes, sir. Um, from your experience, are youths at educational institutions involved in drug abuse? And from your experience, what do you think the, the causes of this abuse of drugs is? Okay. Yeah, uh, youths, especially at uh, educational institutions, starting from high schools, colleges, universities, mm -hmm. they're actually consuming drugs at a very high rate, so to say. This, but uh, we have to understand that youths are consuming drugs based on different uh, agendas. Okay. For example, in uh, higher learning institutions like the universities where I was, the University of Zambia, most youths are consuming drugs just for fun. Okay. So that's one part. Okay. Then if we go in uh, places like, let's say, roads, streets and the like, those are consuming drugs just to cover the shame. Okay, because there are a lot of activities that are taking place on streets, they insult each other, they do all sorts of things. So they are abusing those drugs just to cover the shame for them to fit that environment. Okay, then there are others like um, street kids. Okay, street kids, they are using the drugs or they are abusing the drugs to fit the environment as well. Them is not covering the shame, but Okay, it's covering the shame, but also they feel they're trying to fit the environment where they are found. They mm -hmm. sleep in roads, they sleep in all sorts of places. So actually drugs are being consumed by youths on different agendas. Yes. Then uh, coming to the university, mostly drugs are abused not just by boys or male students, even female students now, which has actually become a very big problem. So, James, as, as a youth, what do you think the viable solutions are to the problem of drug abuse by youths? Okay, um, thank you. The viable solution here, the viable solution here is behavioral change. Okay? Incarceration or arrest should be the last option. Why do I say so? Because we youths like to talk and we like someone to listen to us while we are talking. Drugs, as you can agree with me, is that most of the people, most of the youths are battling for their lives. They want to stop, but there is that addiction attached to it which is actually very difficult, making it very difficult for them to stop. Mm. So I feel like uh, there is a need of actually coming up with ways and means to help us in terms of changing our behaviors, changing our mindset. This is the most important thing. Okay? Why did I say uh, arrest or maybe being in prison is the last option? If eventually if I'm in prison, for example five years or so, I'll come out. But if there is nothing instilled in me, in terms of maybe mindset change or behavior change, I'll continue, all right? I'll continue and I'll be more careful such that I'll continue abusing the drugs at the cross door, right? It won't be open and it will be very difficult for DEC or any other agents to apprehend me, okay? Hence, drug abuse continues, okay? So, in most cases, you know, rehab centers, there is one, Great North Road Academy, it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. So I feel government through the agency, which in this case is DEC, there is a need of coming up with a neutral rehab center, sponsored by the state, which should act like a prison for those abusing drugs. Okay, where they will be taught on a lot of activities which are going to at least help reduce or stop taking those drugs. Okay? Um, at, a, 
at a school level, for example, uh, let me talk about the Great North Florida Academy. Mm -hmm. It's run by the private entity, and it's, it's, it's expensive. Even if you are from a well-to-do family or not, it's very expensive to run mm -hmm. such. And hence, parents may not even take their children there. Okay? And hence, it becomes business as usual. So, my appeal is there is a need of DEC to come up with at least rehab centers as well as drug clubs in schools. I don't know if they are there. Because last time I was in high school, I'd never heard of it. Okay? And mostly high schools, boarding schools, even day schools, universities, colleges, students are actually abusing drugs. So what's going to be done? In as much as there are associations, for example, at UNSA and the like, there's a need of coming up with a drugs association, which should be spearheaded by DEC, not just normal students. Okay? Then, going to a community level, there's a need of coming up with a group, okay? Or maybe just sensitization activities and the like, you, you, maybe they get people. You know, we, in order for you to pull youths, there should be something. You can use artists and the like to go. While that is happening as a hook, they are disseminating the information. Okay? It's not each and every individual, a youth who is actually abusing drugs. It's not that they want to. Others want to stop, but they don't know how. They need someone to talk to. Well, thank you so much for that contribution, James. Oh, and do you have anything to, to add on to the solutions, viable solutions? Yeah, well, when we talk about viable solution, let's look at it from the bottom top approach. And uh, I think it's important to look at it from both dimensions, as in the bottom up approach and the top down approach. Because I think it, this is a procedure. When, when you talk about the a, making it a bottom-up approach it means we are, we are talking about getting those those children who are who are still maybe from kindergarten primary school going to elementary to to secondary schools going there but that's a procedure when are we going to reach so at this point because now the prevalence is that youths are, are abusing drugs mm. so how how do we solve this issue? I think it's important to look at it to to curb it from both dimensions, even from top to down. We start from the from those people who are in universities, not leaving out those who are not in schools or who are not in school. We are talking about those people who are not very much privileged to be in school. They are just in society and they they don't have what to do. Let's invest in those people. They, they are human resource. That's that's cheap labor. I can say. Maybe it it wouldn't be the perfect term to use, but I can say it's it's they, they are cheap labor because instead of them wasting time on drugs and doing these other unproductive things, it's better you get them. You give them what to do. You keep them busy. Mm -hmm. When doing those things, they they won't they won't pay much attention to drugs. They will be busy. They will be occupied because somehow I can say maybe what's causing drug abuse among youths is maybe lack of what to do. Youths in Zambia, I can say they are not very busy. I can say they they don't have much things to do. The activities they are doing, and the other thing I can talk well, about. Not very busy. You actually mean well, not employed, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was actually trying by all means not to use that term, but yeah, okay. youth, youths are not very busy. Uh, they spend most of their time on social media trying to look at, okay, what is Rick Ross saying now? Mm. What's a new drug on the market? Mm. Instead of doing productive things, yes. So the other thing I can actually talk about is let's, let's strengthen family ties. Huh? Mm, when I talk of family ties, I'm talking about how much time do parents spend with their children. 
out there. Yeah, I, I think that again is another cause of, of drug abuse because it's more like nowadays parents just, 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 just let their children do whatever they want to do. They, a child gets to grade 7, grade 8, they just get them a smartphone and then they leave them. They don't even monitor what, those, what their children are doing. So you find that there, there are also this other thing, the, the, the other habit which, which is coming whereby you find that maybe you are, you, are eating, you are having supper on the dining table, children are busy on their phones, parents also are also busy, they don't have time for each other, so you find that they can't be together physically, but each one is in his or her own world. Yeah, so parents also have got a bigger role to play when it comes to curbing drug abuse. They need to teach their children, make their children productive. Yes. And I'll give you an opportunity to, to speak to the general public. Uh, I'll give the opportunity to Owen to talk to parents and James to talk to fellow youths out there on the issue of drug abuse, addiction and stigma. So, Owen, you can go first. Okay. Are ready? Okay, yeah. So, I can, I can say solutions could be that let's, parents, let's, let's spend much time with our children. Not just physical, physical presence, let's be there for them. Let's, let's be people who are, who are going to be to be th their significant others. So when children have got problems, sometimes they even they they even scared to open up to their parents because they are they sometimes we can say maybe they are not familiar. They they just feel like parents are strangers. What if I tell my parents I, I'm, I'm addicted to drugs? What are they? How are they going to look at me? They will first of all ask me where I got the way where or how I started doing all those things and end of it or they, they won't take the responsibility that they caused that. So I can say parents have got a bigger role to play with in, in order to shape the character of their children. Let's monitor what our children are doing with, with especially with the smartphones. We are getting them. Yeah, that's that's what I can say. Okay. James. Okay. For youths, there's a saying, show me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Okay? I'm not saying it's bad to I'm not saying it's bad to actually help to, to help those who are under addiction. Mm -hmm. But it's good to be friends with those whom you know are going to help you by the end of the day to be productive, okay? In as much as most we youths, when we don't have anything to do, we talk about bad things. Maybe we need to change by the end of the day. It's up to us to change, all right? Parents or any other guardians, what they say is just secondary, okay? Then the rest remains to an individual. What do I want by the end of the day, okay? Of course, we can be told drugs are bad, you are given what are the effects of abusing drugs and the like, but what do I want? Okay. So as a youth, as a fellow youth, uh, my advice is, guys, we need to try by all means to stop abusing the drugs because they are not good for our health, they are not good for each and everyone around us, okay? For example, if I'm drunk, or maybe I've abused drugs, it is very easy for me to actually use a knife, ax you, or something, you see? So, actually, we youths have a law. We have, we've got actually the vital law to play, and it should start with an individual. What do I want? So the best way is to just quit, stop, abusing the drugs and just find something else to do, which is actually very important. You can actually volunteer, be volunteering, keep Zambia clean, like we environmentalists, 
volunteering in uh, just outreach programs, climate change, and the like. There are those who are good in terms of uh, gender activists, feminists, feminists, and the like. There is actually hubs for youths where you can go and interact. Okay, so we need interaction by the end of the day so that we stop abusing drugs. Thank you. Thank you so much for those contributions. So, would like to thank James and Owen for being with us and look out for part three as it comes out real soon. Thank you for being part of the show. Stay green and stay safe. Thanks, Timothy. We are here continuing with our talk on drugs, addiction, and stigma. And here I am with a victim of drug abuse. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Okay, so what led to you starting to use drugs? Uh, for me, it was curiosity and mostly peer pressure in mostly. high school. Okay, so you would take these drugs with the friends that pressured you or after being pressured you would? Um, most of the time I would take it with my friends. That's most of the time. Maybe a few occasions I would do it alone. Okay. So what are some of the drugs you are using? Uh, there was codeine, uh, marijuana, that's it. That's it, Codeine and marijuana. Okay. How easy was it to access these, these drugs? Codeine, codeine is quite expensive, so on re rarely, we, re we rarely used to uh, get an opportunity to take. But I've only taken it tw two or three times. Okay. Yes. But which one was far more effective, codeine or marijuana? Marijuana. Marijuana. Yes. Okay. So, were you financially sound? How were you able to, to access this? You did mention it was quite expensive. How did you manage to raise the funds to get these drugs? The thing is, we used to put money together. We put money together to buy codeine especially. So, for us, even a small amount for, for one person, let's say we're seven, we put ten kwacha each, okay. able to afford a bottle, and we share it amongst us. Okay. So, when, when was it when you decided, I've had enough, it's time to change? There was this time I was caught at school. Okay. So, I was caught with marijuana. Okay. From then on, uh, it really affected me. Okay. I disappointed my parents and it, it, I felt bad as a person. Okay. Because I, I really don't like disappointing my parents. Okay. So, so from then on, I said, no, let me, I'll, let me not be reckless anymore and I need to, to change because it's not, it's not me. It's not me as a person. I, okay. I so did you have to visit a rehabilitation center, seek? guidance from a counselor or you had to do it on your own? I had to do it on my own. The thing is, I didn't really get into it. I wasn't so deep into the abuse. I didn't get addicted. But yes, I did I did abuse the drug, but not as much as to get addicted. Okay. Yeah. Now there's a thin line between drug abuse and addiction and people usually use drug abuse in place of addiction. What's the difference between drug abuse and addiction? What I understand is that drug abuse, drug abuse, you can't go without using the drug. Once you had it, you would want more, and you'd realize that you just need it you need it in your system. Oh, uh, drug addiction. Uh, sorry, drug abuse. Okay. Sorry, my bad, yeah? No, it's fine. Drug abuse is when you take the drug without any prescription, even when you don't need it. Okay. Drug addiction. Okay. Okay, so in the process of recovery, did it help to interact with friends, family members, or it was fine for you to go through the process alone? 
Uh, could you repeat? So during the, the the process of recovering from the drug abuse you were facing, did it help to to seek guidance from family and friends? The only guidance I got was from my parents. Okay. They didn't tell any other family members. So we, we talked about it, they asked me why. I just had to be honest. I told them I was curious and felt the peer pressure from my friends. Okay. So I took the drugs. Okay. Did you face any stigma during the, the process from your friends, perhaps? Mm -hmm. From my friends, no. It was my parents at first. Okay. They, yes, they really had it rough with me. Okay. But then sooner or later, they kind of sympathized sympathize with me. Okay. And we began to talk a lot. Okay. So they, at least I'm happy that they tried to understand me. Okay. So, so as we speak, we are we're past the point where you, you use drugs now. Yes, we're way past that. Okay, that's wonderful to hear. Any words you'd like to give to our fellow youths, young adults over drug abuse and addiction? Um, I would say there are other ways to occupy or make yourself happy. Drug abuse, it, yes, you, you, you do gain uh, pleasure and enjoyment from drug abuse or drug, yeah, playing with drugs, but it will lead you down a, a, a very bad path and I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. No, thank you very much for sharing us your experience on drug abuse. Thank you. Okay. Move it on to the next. Okay, so we move on to other stakeholders who share their views on drug abuse, stigma and addiction.